Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We use slow Torkoal to set up Drought and then a Shell Smash, doubling our offenses in speed, but dropping our defenses. The defense drop then activates our Eject Pack held item, which allows an immediate switch. We can go right into Speedy Delphox, who can then use Copycat. This copies whatever the last move used was, allowing the fox to smash its shell. We use the White Herb held item to negate the defense drops, and now stab flamethrowers with the boost in the sun hit extremely hard. Plus, since we're itemless, Delphox's ability Magician steals the opponents after killing them. It turns out even shellless, Shell Smash Delphox is a massive threat. Alright, look, getting stuff that is very obviously shellless to use Shell Smash is fun, and this strategy is actually kinda crazy. If you're into this kinda thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button because less than half of the people watching this are subscribed, and you can help me on my way to 400k. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so as my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Swampert, I end up having a keychain, and this is not the greatest matchup for me. Obviously this thing can Earthquake. I imagine they probably just go ahead and set up the Stealth Rock of their own, if not just go for a flip turn, so I just decide to set down some spikes, because if there's one thing that Klefki is gonna do well, it's be annoying, and make sure you step on some stuff and break potential Focus Sashes, and just make the sweepers in the back's job a little bit easier. So it turns out they actually go for the Yawn, which is fine, because now I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and get out of here, no longer be sleepy, and also expecting an Earthquake, I can bring in the Mess Grid. Now this thing is basically here, I'm to get some potential momentum with things like Healing Wish, but also I can set up Stealth Rock of my own and knock off and just be kind of a menace with my little hot dog hair. So, they actually end up going for the Stealth Rock that turn, which is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and match that and set up the rocks of my own as they actually decide to switch into the freaking Sandman. And that is going to end up being a weirdier, which this thing is actually weird as hell. I don't know what this wants to really do. And as I see this, I'm like, is it going to Megahorn me? I feel like he seems like a Megahorn kind of guy. Regardless, I'm just going to go for the knockoff, which is going to do a nice little chunk of damage. Also gets rid of a Lumberry, which is fine. And they do actually end up going for a Trailblaze. So Buddy's trying to work up some speed. And I'm like mildly afraid of what this deer has in store. I, I do feel like Mesprit can take an attack here, no problem. But as I'm looking at it, this seems like a pretty decent opportunity to get the Torkoal action going. I figure they probably have the bug coverage, and if I bring in Torkoal, I know I can take physical attacks all day. And I also should be able to work up some Shell Smash shenanigans. So, I bring in the Turtle. We are going to go ahead and take some Stealth Rock Chip, which is fine. But more importantly, we get up that Drought, which is going to make the sun real harsh. And they do actually end up going for the Megahorn, which is fine, right to the damn turtle neck, and I actually get crit, which it doesn't really matter, because I know I can take another one, because there's one thing for sure, and that is Torkoal does not die, especially when we're running full defense. They actually end up going for the Psy Shield Bash, which does do a nice little chunk of damage, and in the process gives them a physical defense boost. However, now Sheldon is about to go smash and absolutely destroy my own shell for the sake of the greater good, and that is gonna go ahead and bust some stats out all crazy. We're looking like a scary turtle, and then we're like, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and head out. With that <laughs> stat drop, it does, of course, activate the eject pack, and now it is Firefox time. So, we do know that this thing has plus one speed. I figure I still should be faster, uh, regardless, because I am max speed, and that is just a deer. So, I come in, and my non-existent shell is about to get so damn smashed. So I actually decided to go for the Terra Fire. There's a couple different reasons, but most of all, it's because now I'm just gonna take not very effective damage from a Megahorn, and I need to try to conserve HP as much as possible here. So going for that Terra Fire, we put the candles on our damn head, and I am gonna be faster to be able to go for that Copycat. Since the last move used was the Torkoal Shell Smash, we are now going to be going full crazy mode with the Delphox. We obviously get the defensive drop, but more importantly, the plus two to our offenses and our speed. We're now gonna be faster than everything, hitting extremely hard. And not only that, we actually don't have to worry about the defensive drop because that is gonna activate the White Herb. So they do actually go for the Megahorn. It does connect and it does a nice little chunk of damage, but thanks to the Terra, we are taking it pretty easily. And now it's time to take full advantage of the absolute nuke that is Terra Fire in the sun after a Shell Smash. We are extremely fast, and Delphox is fully set up at this point. So that takes care of the Weirdier, and now we get to see what they want to go into. So, turns out they're going to go into the Dragonite. This thing does take Stealth Rock, which breaks its multi-scale. 
Luckily, I do have the Dazzling Gleam coverage, and we just gleam the hell out of him. That does take care of the Dragonite, but also, which is cool, we are able to activate our Magician ability, which ends up stealing the Citrus Berry that it had, which is kind of sweet, because then we can just eat it immediately. And it was probably some type of, like, defensive Dragonite with Citrus, but that is my berry now, and we're feeling nice and healthy. So, the sun does go away, because what's unfortunate is that Torkoal cannot run Heat Rock and Eject Pack. So, with the Sun Gun, that is going to dampen our firepower just a little bit. And as they go into a Shaman, I'm looking at this little Hedgehog thinking, this little bastard knows that a Flamethrower is coming, and he does not want to get roasted like a damn summer barbecue. So, I figured they probably are going to go for the Terra. Now, if I know a Shaman, I've seen my fair share of Terra water on these little fellas. So, I'm actually going to go ahead and predict the Terra, and rather than going for Flamethrower, I'm going to go for the Psychic, because as it turns out, they are going to go for that Terra Water, trying to resist the Flamethrower here, and now the thing is a freaking Water Hog. However, a Psychic after a Shell Smash should be enough to KO regardless, and that is going to be a dead sweet pea. So now we don't have to worry about the Terra, along with the threat of the, the little, little Grass Hedgehog. And Delphox is absolutely ripping in Terran. Not only that, but now we're able to actually steal that thing's Choice Specs, which is actually kind of hilarious, because if I didn't have enough damage before, now, with a Shell Smash boost and a Choice Specs, this thing is absolutely going crazy. So, they decide now to go into the Swampert, they're down to half of the team, and obviously I can outspeed, and obviously a Psychic is going to rip this thing into the damn Shadow Realm, and that's going to be a dead Swampert. So, I do lock myself into the Psychic, which feels fine, and now they're able to bring in the Mimikyu, which I figured they probably would have done a long-ass time ago, because obviously I have to break this thing's disguise uh, just to get through it, and... As this thing comes in, I can go for a Psychic. I am obviously going to be faster. That's going to be able to break this thing's little fake-ass Pikachu neck. And now they have the option to either go for an attack and then pair that with priority, or go for the setup. So, I break the Disguise. does give us a little bit of chip in the process. But they decide to go for the Swords Dance. They're probably trying to turn the match around with the Swords Dance Mimikyu. This thing is a threat. And now they have the option to be faster with the priority Shadow Sneak. But as it turns out, Delphox is not going down that easy. We're able to just barely hang on. That's a plus two. With the Life Orb, I'm able to live. And the Psychic is going to take care of the Mimikyu. So I fully believe that once they saw the heal from the Citrus Berry that I stole, they probably just thought Mimikyu wasn't going to be able to do it by itself. But regardless, Delphox is doing some nonsense this thing is not supposed to do. So their final Pokemon is actually going to be the Magnezone. This thing comes in. The magnets be spinning, and obviously I'm locked into Psychic, which is not very effective, but I figure it's probably going to kill anyway. And as it turns out, this thing lives on literally 1 HP, which is actually crazy. And it's a body press Magnezone, which is actually pretty damn sick. And that is going to take care of the Delphox, who does not get awarded the entire body bag, which is unfortunate. But all I have to do now is just end up knocking out that last HP. I meant to go into the Hisuian Lilligant here, and I actually go into Torkoal. And then Torkoal's like, hey, I actually lived the Stealth Rock, which does set up the sun, which is, is like, gonna, <laughs> I guess, help out a little bit. But Torkoal's like, you just sent me in here to die, huh? That's honestly disrespectful. The body press does finish me off, but the impending doom that awaits is now Hisuian Lilligant, who's like a thousand times faster. And then I can just go ahead and bop him with a close combat. So that is gonna do it for game number one. We come in with a nice little twirl. And kind of just a ridiculous match, and just mostly that it's a ridiculous strategy, but it's super fun to pull off. So, some misplays lead into Delphox destruction, and that is now gonna bring us into match number two. Hey, if you haven't hit the like button already, you should probably click it because it helps out the channel. And with that, let's go ahead and actually get into the game. All right, so this time my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Glamora. Which is obviously pretty classic. Now, I have a Klefki who is worried about like an Earth Power, but also I'm kind of free to set up spikes here as this thing can't Mortal Spin against me, obviously being a poison move. And Klefki's not here for a long time, he's here for a good time. So I'm gonna lay some spikes around, and they actually end up setting up the Stealth Rock of their own, which is, of course, fine. I have the Rapid Spin support with my own Torkoal, but honestly, we're not super worried about it. So. I have a couple different options here. I decide to go for the Thunder Wave. I want to make this thing slower and also potentially grab some you know, free turns later on. But they actually end up switching and they're going to go into the Slow King. So I'm like, hey buddy, I know that you're pretty slow in pink. But you're going to have to go ahead and be a little bit more slower. I get the Thunder Wave off there, which doesn't really make a difference with Slow King. But you know, it might result in making things a little bit easier. 
And at this point, I'm like, well, I might as well just go right into the Mesprit. I try not to get the setup super early with this because more often than not, people are going to have ways to stop it in the back. But if I can set up as many hazards as possible and get some knockoffs and whittle things down, it makes my life just a whole lot easier. So they actually end up going for the Surf there, which doesn't do a whole lot of damage because I'm especially defensive as titties. And also after some leftovers, see, we're looking pretty healthy. So main option is to go for a knockoff here. Not only to get rid of this thing's item, but it's actually going to be pretty valuable chip. And that does a whole bunch of damage. I tell his ass to knock it off, and I say that vest looks ridiculous on you. And now my special attack is going to hit a whole lot harder versus this slow king, which is kind of one of their main ways of stopping what my Delphox can do. So, uh, they actually get the full pair there, which is totally fine. And once I got the knockoff, I kind of imagine they probably switch to get regenerator, which is exactly what they're going to do. Freaking... Slowking is just always regenerating and incredibly annoying and bulky, but uh, another incredibly annoying and bulky fella comes right in, which is going to be the Garganackle, and I just set up some little little babies around him. I'm like, these are your family. You take the stealth rock, and uh, it's going to be nice. So the problem with Garganackle is I don't know exactly what this thing wants to do, if it's going to be like an iron defense or something like that. More than likely, it's just going to salt here and just be a salty dick. So I just decide... I'm going to go for the knockoff on this thing, too. I say, no more items for you, Mr. Guy. I'm going to go ahead and make sure them items are just all over the ground. I do get rid of the Rocky Helmet, which is nice, but not before I get hurt a little bit by it. And they do actually just go for the Salt Cure, which, nothing wrong with some salty hot dog hairs <laughs> floating around. I am being Salt Cured, and I figure I'm okay with that. Again, this Mesprit is mostly, its role on this team is to be kind of a way to pivot into something like Torkoal, or the Delphox by means of like going for Healing Wish and kind of just be something I can switch into stuff with being a bulky you know, little fella. I just decide now I'm going to go for that Healing Wish. I'm going to try to get something going here as they are going to end up switching into uh, the Glamora once again. So the good news is if this thing was Focus Ash, it does get broken by the spikes and obviously the rocks. And uh, as Glamora comes in, I'm just going to go ahead and off myself with a Healing Wish, which is just going to try to at least get things in motion uh, a little bit for me here again I talked about not trying to set it up super early but as I'm looking at it here I'm like you know what this doesn't seem like a bad opportunity and while it is a kind of a weird position trying to go into Torkoal and Shell Smash versus Glamora just mostly because both Torkoal and Delphox are weak to it I imagine they probably don't want to stay in versus when I once I get Delphox in so I bring in Sheldon we do set up that drought and I imagine they're probably going to Mortal Spin. That's going to buy me at least a free turn here to go ahead and get up my Shell Smash, which is exactly what they're going to do. They Mortal Spin away the hazards, which also gets me poisoned in the process, but Turtle is fine with that. It does get rid of all my nonsense. However, it's time to start smashing. We have the sun up, the guns are out, and the shells are broken as hell out here. We obviously get the defensive drop that's going to activate our eject pack. And once again, I'm looking at this matchup thinking, okay, I can go into the Delphox, and we know that we outspeed with it, and I just am kind of going to bank on the fact that they're going to go ahead and switch out. So I get that eject pack, which is always probably for the opponent just confusing as all hell. They're like, what? And <laughs> as Delphox is going to come in here, I'm really banking on them not going for like a power jump, because obviously I can't Terra out of uh, being weak to that. But as Delphox pops in, I'm like, I'm just going to psychic the hell out of you, buddy, and you should surely switch the hell out of here. So after some Black Sludge, thing is looking healthy. It was not Focus Sash, but I'm just going to go for that Copycat, and it works out perfectly. They are going to end up switching out, likely fearing the Psychic here, and they actually end up going into the Toad Scroll. So this is actually an interesting switch, and you'll kind of see why. As I go for that Copycat, obviously last move being used, being Shell Smash, is now going to turn my ass into a Foxy Clam, is what they called me in high school, and I can get all the stat boosts that come with it. So Toad Squirrel is interesting. I am going to be faster, obviously, and this thing gets absolutely roasted by a flamethrower. So I get that white herb that's going to negate those defensive drops, and now we are absolutely rolling. I can then just go for the flamethrower, and they're probably thinking, well, shit, this did not work out. So as I go for that flamethrower, it does obviously just end up knocking out the Toad Squirrel, but more importantly, we see kind of what the plan was. As I'm going to go ahead and activate that Magician, I get the thing's red card. They likely switched into Toad Squirrel as a specially defensive set, expecting a Psychic and then switching me out. But instead, the red card does in fact not work if you just die. So that is actually amazing. Now I'm holding the red card, which is hilarious. And as they go into Gengar, I am in fact definitely faster than this thing, even if it's like Scarf. And a Psychic is just going to take care of it. So that's a dead Gengar, and I still have a little red card in the old back pocket. 
And now the main goal is just to see how big of a hole we can poke in the squad with the Delphox here. So they decide to go into the Slow King. This thing is paralyzed and looking a little bit healthy. But as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? It doesn't have its Assault Vest anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and try to take advantage of this last Sun Turn by going for the Terra Fire. It's just going to be able to boost up my Flamethrower just a little bit more. And depending on how, kind of how built this is, I might be able to grab a kill here. I'm not exactly sure on the couch. But what I do know is this Fox is here to blast some shit. So I go for the Flamethrower, boosted by the Terra Fire in the sun. And uh, Slow King is just way too bulky of a fella. It is able to live, and well, it doesn't take it out. The Surf actually doesn't do much to us because of that sun being up. So I'm like, hey, that's fine. And then what actually ends up happening, obviously the red card activates and switches that thing out, which is like kind of cool, but then I realize it kind of hose me because now that thing's going to be able to get Regenerator once again, and I'm like, well, that was just a weird turn. You know how I talked about the Glamora having leftovers earlier? It's actually Black Sludge, and... Since I don't have an item anymore, that's actually going to be kind of bad for me. But, of course, I can just go for a Psychic, I outspeed, and I'm easily just going to be able to knock out the Glamora, no problem. But the problem is, now I'm going to be like, hey, actually, let me go ahead and munch on some of that Black Sludge. Which is quite bad, because Magician, obviously, is just hoeing me left and right here. I end up now eating Black Sludge, and it hurts me. So I'm like, damn, yeah. most of the time Magician is good. You want their held items, but... <laughs> In that case, getting Black Sludge is just hilarious and not ideal. So, now they can go back into Slow King, who obviously did get some Regenerator. And we saw how much damage that Flamethrower did with the Sun Up earlier. And it's definitely looking like it's not going to be able to kill here. But we have the chance for them to be fully paralyzed. And if I can get two off, I can easily take care of it. So, it obviously does live. And sadly, it does not get fully parried. And a Surf is going to be able to take care of the Delphox. So, this is a good example of when Delphox can't quite pull off the entire body bag. However, we did knock out a ton of their big threats and honestly open up the rest of the team to clean up what we left. So, I decided to go back into the Torkoal because honestly having the sun up really is still great for me. Um, and as I come in, I actually get the Healing Wish activated, which is honestly like I kind of forgot that that was a thing. But it's also unfortunate that it happens before you take the Stealth Rock. So I come in, I get healed, and then I touch rocks, and then I set up the sun. So there's just like a ton of random bullshit going on but moral of the story turtle is here to just go for a nice little solar beam and that's exactly what we're gonna do so actually there's a real fun dynamic with this squad and that uh this torkoal's moveset is a bit different than last time i actually don't have the lava plume or actually any fire coverage for that matter but as the garganacle comes in that's kind of fine because i can at least just beam his ass with a fire in my laser and a solar beam is going to do a whole bunch of damage but why it's bad that i don't have fire coverage it's because they do have a scissor in the back, which is hilarious for me. So <laughs> it doesn't actually end up quite knocking out the Garg. As I'm looking at this, I'm like, I'm not super worried. I'm just going to go for the Stealth Rock. It's actually going to be kind of nice to get some chip on everything in just late game rocks. Sometimes is what you're looking for. So they actually end up switching directly into the scissor, which is a bold move you know, versus the Torkoal. Because pretty much every one other than me fucking up is going to have some <laughs> fire coverage. Uh, however, as Scizor comes in, I expect they probably pivot. I can bluff the fact that I have the fire coverage, but then I'm like, I'm just going to go into Klefki. This thing, Klefki does not give a damn about the Scizor, and honestly, the Garganacle can't switch back in since the Stealth Rock is up. And if I can just get up a whole bunch of spikes, I can make it so much easier for me in the long run. So, he actually ends up going for the U-turn. Definitely expect something like the Lava Plume to come. But it's a fun dynamic because they're switching to Torkoal being Slow King isn't really a thing because I have the support with the Solar Beam. But it's all just a ridiculous mind game at this point. So as they go into the Garg, the thing does in fact just die from the Stealth Rock, which is always a pretty damn good sight to see. And then Slow King can come back in. So Slow King again is just so annoying with its Regenerator because it's still you know, a, a bit below half. But at this point I'm like, should I just get some chip here? I'm just going to get some freaking chip. The Slow King is going to be a damn menace all day today. And uh, it does actually have the flamethrower coverage. So that does take care of the Klefki. I've always thought it's weird that the slow poke line can learn flamethrower. I don't know. Is there some lore behind that that I'm missing? I, I don't know. He, he flamethrowers me and kills me regardless. And at this point, it's looking like uh, freaking Clarice over here does have a nice little opening. Things are, things are going ridiculous at this point. But I can come in and obviously threaten this thing out with a solar blade now. Scizor is obviously the kind of main switch in here, but if they stayed in and I went for a close combat and then I die to the Slow King, I am in a bad spot. Freaking 
Lilligan is definitely my win con at this point. And as I do go into the Scizor, it's going to take a nice little chunk from the Solar Blade. But here's the thing. I'm worried about this Scizor being Choice Banded because then a Bullet Punch is not ideal for me. So as I blade the hell out of him, I get a nice little bit of chip there. Also some Life Orb chip. And at this point, the sun is going to go away. So with the sun away, the main kind of bad news about that is that I can no longer Solar Blade. As I'm looking at it here, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for the close combat. I see a kill. If it's a choice banded bullet punch, it's bad news. But they actually just probably went for the U-turn, expecting to switch into Torkoal. And that's going to take care of the Scizor, which is freaking finally. So <laughs> now the final Mon is going to be the Slow King. And of course... Clarice is only solar blading shit if the solar is is blading and the sun is not out. So, as uh, all I can really do here is just go right into the Torkoal, who honestly actually just has the matchup himself. Uh, not only am I going to be able to get the sun up for the potential for Lilligant just to clean this thing up, but also Torkoal, with the ability to solar beam out of the freaking spout on my damn back, is going to help me out a bit. So I come in, we make it nice and sunny in the middle of the damn night here on the beach, and this thing does get fully paired, which is fine. I know I would have been able to probably take a surf anyway in the sun, but at this point I do outspeed because Torkoal is fast as hell, the fastest turtle alive, and a solar beam is going to be able to kill. Psych, it lives on 1 HP also. I'm getting destroyed with 1 HP lives, which is just ridiculous. And a surf actually, yeah, it does kill me with a crit. So it's like, well, I don't know how things are just living with invisible focus ashes out here, but it is most definitely happening. So. Luckily, I do have two things that are incredibly fast and can hopefully do 1 HP damage to the Slow King. So, all I gotta do is twirl my little Clarice in and Lilligan is once again gonna be able to clean it up for us. So having some extra little chlorophyll sweepers in the back ends up always being pretty damn nice. I can just absolutely solar blade the shit out of that last HP and that is gonna be the end of the match. Honestly, still kind of a ridiculous game with just some wonky plays. And mostly we're just out here playing around and it's kind of working out. So that is going to do it for game number two after some Life Orb chip. And uh, honestly, super fun game. So while you thought we were done, I do have one more little bonus match action for you. And this one is actually crazy. Most of all, as you're going to see from Team Preview, Buddy is working with the rain in the form of the Pelipper. And that's going to make my sunny times a whole lot more interesting. And they also just have some big old threats. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so one of the bigger things I'm worried about in seeing this matchup is this friggin' spider right here. Now, sticky web support against my team is super not ideal. So, as I lead off with the Torkoal, I get up that drought, which is nice, and I'm just gonna go right for a Lava Plume. What I want to mainly do is knock this thing down to its pretty much guaranteed Focus Ash, and then I can potentially Rapid Spin away uh, that sticky web on that last HP. So, I get the Lava Plume off. As it leaves with that Focus Ash, it does not get the burn, which I'm kind of fine with, because now that opens the door for pretty much a free Rapid Spin. And here's where things get super crazy. They actually end up going for the Electro Web, which is wildly unfortunate, because that is going to drop my speed stat and then just uses up my Eject Pack, which throws a wrench in the entire operation, and now the plan is entirely different. I'm not going to be able to Eject Pack into Delphox, and things have gotten ridiculous. So... I just decided to go into the jump up here. I can just knock out that last HP with a seed bomb and then kind of see whatever they want to go into versus, you know, a chlorophyll boosted uh, jump up at this point. So it turns out they're going to go into the Yan Mega. Now, I know what this Yan Mega wants to do. Obviously, I'm going to be faster, so they're probably going to go for a protect. And predicting that, I can actually just go for the Swords Dance instead. So they do go for the protect. They want to get that speed boost. And at plus one, it's still not quite going to be faster, which gives me quite the upper hand because after a Swords Dance, I do have the flying coverage. However, this Jump Bluff is a little bit of a quirk in that I usually need to activate my Lychee Berry for my acrobatics to be full strength. But I'm going to go for it regardless. I figure at plus two, I'm faster, I can knock it out, but it actually does not have enough damage to kill it. And then an Air Slash is just going to straight up knock me out. And that is pretty bad because now... This is going to be a, an extremely scary freaking Yan Mega. And as my sun goes away, now I don't have the benefit of going straight into uh, Lilligan at plus two speed. Plus it could just protect. But then I'm like, this is fine. I can just bring in Torkoal, who should be able to live in Air Slash. Um, obviously, I don't give a damn about being sticky webbed. But then I can just kill it with a Lava Plume and then everything's fine. So... I get up the drought, which is exactly what we need, and I'm just going to go ahead and throw some lava around. Now, they go for the air slash. It does not quite knock me out, but 
it gets the flinch, which is, again, <laughs> again, literally worst case scenario. The flinch there is horrible because now another air slash just takes care of Torkoal. So I am finding myself in, in quite a bad position. Now here's the thing, there's truly not a whole lot of ways out of this, but there is definitely a way. So I lose my main Sunsetter, which is unfortunate. Um, however, here's the thing, I can go into the Lilligan and the only way that I can live and attack here is quite literally if I'm able to bust out my Terra and I don't get flinched by a damn Air Slash. Those two things need to happen. So I need to go for the Terra Fire to lose the Grass Typing and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So. Terra Fire on this thing is mostly to blast Corviknights, but sometimes the defensive is what you're looking for. So we put on our crooked-ass chandelier hat, and I'm like, please, if there's an Arceus out there, do not let me get flinched. They go for that Air Slash, I'm able to live, and we do not flinch, which is absolutely amazing. And now, a Terra Blast is going to get us out of the little pickle we were in with the freaking Yan Mega. That thing can absolutely be a menace if it's able to get up too many speed boosts and stuff. So... With that, we are, we've got ourselves into a spot where I can pull this game back, and it's not going to be in means of Delphox shell smashing, but honestly, Delphox is going to play a pretty big role. So, now they decide to go into the Pelper, that's mostly just because now it's raining, and this thing kills me with like a Hydro Pump, and obviously lives in the attack. So I have to switch my ass on out of here, and I decide to go into the Klefki, mostly because I am specially defensive, I know I can take attacks from this thing all day, uh, but also, this thing is going to be able to have a Prankster... Uh, sunny day set up and get rid of the rain. We do not want it to be a rainy day. And as that uh, freaking Hydro Pump does do a whole bunch of damage, I'm figuring now they're probably just going to click that again, seeing a kill. And that's going to allow me to just go for a sunny day. And that's going to make the rain dry up a bit, which is also going to allow uh, Hydro Pump not to do as much damage. And we are at least now able to take one more, which is actually amazing. So I have myself a free turn here, and I decide I'm going to go for the Thunder Wave. I kind of need to cripple what this thing can do. And uh, Delphox is looking like it's going to be a win condition here. So I get that para there, which is amazing because I also get the full para, which also now just buys me another another little turn for some shenanigans here. So I decided to go for just a layer of spikes. Might end up helping out in the long run. And I was like, it was either get some chip damage with a Dazzling Gleam or go for the spikes there. I, I go for the spikes, and as they go for one more Hydro Pump, I actually live it with one. So it's like finally now I'm living shit with one HP. And that feels kind of nice, which is going to allow me to get up another Spikes, which is, we're right back in it. Now they are going to be able to knock me out with a U-turn, which is fine. They want to try to be, be able to bring back in the Pelipper and get up the rain once again, which does hinder some stuff. But honestly, I'm kind of fine with it. So as they switch this thing out, uh, they are going to have to show me what they want to bring into so I can get a matchup. And it is going to end up being the Orthworm. This thing is big, hairy, and pink like the damn Alaskan Bullworm. And now it's finally time to go into the Firefox. So here's the thing, the sun is up, gonna boost my flamethrowers. Also, we just have the coverage versus this. And also, as we touch the sticky web, it is going to drop my speed stat, which is this gonna activate my uh, my little white herbs. That's gonna get rid of the speed drop, which is actually great because now uh, we don't have to worry about being slower than stuff, at least for as long as I'm in. So I can just go for a flamethrower here, and that is just gonna take care of friggin' Snakey. They were probably hoping for an overpredict, try to try to get like a shed tail. But that takes care of that, and also I'm able to magician a citrus berry, so now I have myself a little, little one in the chamber citrus berry, which is awesome. And now they're gonna go into Pelipper. So the problem with the rain is that frick, we don't want it to be raining. I'm a friggin' Firefox, and that's annoying. So. I decide it's in my best interest to keep the Delphox as a win con. Now, I mostly just know that uh, this thing can kill me with a Hydro Pump, and I can't do enough with a Psychic unless I get a full Para. So I decide to just go into the Mesprit, who does take the Hydro Pump no problem, or at least I know I can take two of them. And now, the goal is going to be try to get some chip on the Pelipper, because this is kind of the only thing stopping uh, the Delphox here. So I just decide to go for the Psychic. I know that I'm going to be faster here and uh, do a huge chunk of damage with that Psychic there. That puts it in range for a Psychic from my Delphox to knock it out. And they just decide to now go for the U-turn. So here's a little overview. Now they have three Mons left. They have obviously the Pelipper, they have a Volcarona, and they have an Iron Hands. And as Volcarona comes in, I am in a little bit of trouble here because if they want to go for a Quiver Dance, it's going to be quite bad. So Mesprit in this position, I'm just going to end up going for the Healing Wish here. I, I figure if I can get in Delphox, and like heal after a turn, that would be kind of nice. They actually end up going for the Bug Buzz, which is actually perfect. Better than a Quiver Dance setup because as it does take care of the Mesprit, 
I am now pretty free to go into the Delphox, who obviously takes just neutral from a Bug Buzz. I know this thing cannot kill me in one hit. And we have ourselves a little 1v1 situation here that's actually kind of perfect since they don't have a Quiver Dance. So I come in, I do take the Speed Drop, which is fine, and I can go for a Psychic here. At full health, I know that I can take an attack. A Bug Buzz is going to do a whole bunch of damage. However, that is actually going to bring me down to my Citrus Berry, and that's why Magician was so incredibly clutch, because after that recovery, it's looking close on whether or not I can take another one, which is actually hilarious. So, as I go for a Psychic, it's not going to be enough to knock this thing out. I do steal its Focus Sash, which is useless, but at this point, if I can live another Bug Buzz, we might have the game. They go for the Bug Buzz, and I live with 11 HP, which that Citrus Berry Magician was the most clutch thing of all time, and another Psychic is able to take care of the Volcarona. So Delphox has now found herself in a spot where, you know, Pelipper has enough chip to where I can take care of it, and then they have an Iron Hands, which I have a super effective hit against. So as they go into the Pelipper here, I obviously can just go for the Psychic, no problem. I am going to be faster than a damn crippled bird who is somehow still flying, and that's going to do it. So now we've got ourselves a position where all they have left is the Iron Hands, and that is going to be an interesting matchup because that boy is bulky but I've got a couple things in the back. So, as they bring in Iron Hands, this is kind of the main reason why I wanted to set up the spikes is just to get as much chip as possible. Does a little bit of damage there, and I'm free to just go for that super effective Psychic and see how much we can do. Main goal, get as much chip as we can to leave it open for the Lilligan in the back, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. I get it to a spot where I'm pretty comfortable that a close combat can do it, and as it does finish me off with an Earthquake, we have ourselves a good old fashioned 1v1 matchup here. And Lilligant is truly the late game GOAT, because as I can bring this thing in, we are still going to be able to uh, come in for free, essentially. And we are definitely faster than the old chubby boy over here. So we come in with a little twirl. With that sticky web, it's going to make it a little bit interesting, but obviously, uh, even with my speed drop, I should be faster than an Iron Hands that never has speed investment. We do bust him with a close combat right to the old belly, and that is going to be the end of the game. Honestly... Inclu had to include this one because Delphox did in fact still clutch it up with Magician and also just a ridiculous match. And uh, with that, that's going to do it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support and I will catch you next time. Peace out.